Hello everyone! Can you believe it? On the steep cliffs, where it seems impossible to live, hides a unique poultry farming method. This model not only brings high economic efficiency, but also contributes to environmental protection. Let's explore the fascinating world of livestock farming on these rugged cliffs together. Are these unique farm enclosures surprising to you? It might sound unbelievable, but this is actually a unique and effective farming method being implemented in many Asian countries such as China, the Philippines, and Vietnam, where the poultry farming industry is booming. This model utilizes the mountainous terrain to construct multi-tiered farm enclosures. First, let's explore the process of caring for the young chicks. Caring for chicks on the mountainside requires careful attention and creativity. Firstly, selecting a safe location to build protective enclosures is crucial. This helps protect the chicks from the risk of falling and other dangers, ensuring a safe and comfortable environment for their development. Nutritious food is provided from natural sources such as grass, leaves, insects, and seeds. At the same time, protecting them from harsh weather conditions is also crucial. Therefore, careful consideration should be given to the design of the enclosures, ensuring that they can withstand harsh weather elements. With rugged and diverse mountainous terrain, the mountainous regions provide a vibrant and rich environment for poultry farming. Deep valleys and steep mountain slopes contribute to the diversity of farming areas. Please leave number one if you're interested in this model of raising chickens in the mountains. While the mountainous poultry farming model brings many benefits, it cannot avoid challenges, especially from predatory animals such as foxes and eagles. Do you supplement your chicken's diet with this type of greens on your farm? I've been told that at this poultry farm, farmers don't use any synthetic chemicals, antibiotics, or genetically modified compounds for their flock. Instead, they employ natural methods for disease prevention and treatment in the chickens. Have you ever wondered why they came up with this idea? It's truly an expression of ingenious creativity. Utilizing this terrain has brought about unexpected efficiency. Instead of investing a large amount of capital to build barns, farmers can save costs by using these rock caves as shelters for their chickens. Compared to other modern chicken farming methods, this approach doesn't require a lot of money to build coops. 
You just need to utilize your land to create an ideal environment for your flock. Free-range meat, raised by this method, is renowned for its delicious, distinctive flavor and superior quality. The clear distinction between free-range and farm-raised chicken in modern farms is their tenderness and rich flavor. Attributed to their natural upbringing without any artificial stimulants, This creates a significant difference in taste and culinary experience, making free-range chicken a preferred choice for those who appreciate natural flavors. Next, let's delve into the process of raising and caring for modern chicken farms. With large-scale operations, millions of chicks are transferred to enclosed facilities after hatching for health checks and vaccinations. Here, advanced technology is employed to accurately and modernly assess the health status of each chick. Chickens that meet the standards will be marked automatically and delicately ensuring their quality and safety for optimal development. Currently, in the United States, there are approximately 233,770 chicken farms, with billions of chickens being released each year. The feed for chickens on these farms mainly consists of corn, soybeans, and various mixed feeds, providing a diverse and balanced nutritional regimen for the flock. With the advancement in modern technology and advanced equipment at mechanized farms, the use of nipple drinkers for water supply is widespread. Particularly in mechanized poultry farms, this practice has become more common than ever before. Not only does it enhance efficiency in providing water to the flock, but it also minimizes incidents and saves time for caretakers. Have you ever been curious about how farms handle the chicken manure and maintain cleanliness in the coop daily? One common solution is to use a conveyor belt system to transport chicken manure out of the coop and dispose of it outside the farm every day. Please comment number one to let me know that you'll be with us until the end of this video. For commercially raised chicken breeds, the harvesting time is usually shorter compared to free range farms. These farms are often designed to meet large-scale production and consumption demands while ensuring the quality of chicken products. Once the chickens reach the appropriate age and weight, they are transported to large processing plants to undergo the meat production process.
This is what's happening inside a chicken processing plant, where about three and a half million chickens are processed daily. At this plant, millions of chickens are hung upside down and move along the conveyor belt. Before entering the feather removal stage, the chickens are dipped in boiling water. Specialized equipment then efficiently and quickly remove the chicken feathers in just 30 seconds, followed by the removal of the chicken feet. Then the chicken organs will also be cleaned. The chickens will then be placed in a salt water bath for a few minutes to clean them. This not only ensures the cleanliness of the product, but also enhances efficiency and meets standards in the production process, from farming to harvesting and processing the final product. Chicken meat is the most popular food globally, providing richness and diversity in cuisine. From favorite dishes to traditional meals, chicken meat is widely cherished and utilized across various cultures, imparting unique flavors to each dish. In recent years, the poultry meat production and export industry has become one of the largest economic sectors globally. Large-scale poultry processing plants worldwide play a crucial role in driving the growth of this industry. Besides creating employment opportunities and fostering economic development, they also contribute to providing safe and high-quality food for millions of people worldwide. Every year, billions of toothpaste tubes are manufactured under various brand names such as Colgate, Close-Up, and Sensodyne worldwide. Toothpaste typically contains abrasive substances to clean and whiten teeth. Surprisingly, producing toothpaste requires a considerable amount of raw materials. As everyone might know, Colgate is a toothpaste brand known for its ability to prevent issues like tooth decay and bad breath. Currently, this product is available in supermarkets and some other small stores worldwide, spanning over 150 countries across the globe. The history of Colgate dates back to the early 19th century when William Colgate, an English immigrant, founded the largest recognized oral care brand in the world. In 1806, he began a modest business of soap and candle making in New York. Colgate's dedication to quality and early innovation expanded their products into the future. The first toothpaste packaged in a tube was introduced in 1873, marking a new chapter in the history of personal oral hygiene at that time. Back then, toothpaste was often packaged in jars and wasn't as convenient as when packaged in tubes like today. 
Colgate's focus on scientific research to enhance the product led to the development of more effective and user-friendly toothpaste varieties in the 20th century. Please leave the number one if you use Colgate toothpaste to clean your pet's teeth at home. The toothpaste manufacturing process is a fascinating blend of chemistry and mechanics, leaving one amazed. It begins by blending abrasive substances like silica and chalk transforming them into crucial components in teeth cleaning. To gain a better understanding, let's visit the modern Colgate factories in the outskirts of London. Here, the factory produces one million toothpaste tubes every day. The toothpaste ingredients are transported to the factory by trucks like this one. The global demand for toothpaste is immense, so factories like this provide many jobs. Do you know what ingredients are needed to make toothpaste? They typically include sodium fluoride to prevent tooth decay, abrasive agents like silica and calcium carbonate, or sodium bicarbonate for mechanical cleaning. These are combined into a mixture in a water-based solvent, ensuring the dissolution of all these materials. Additionally, toothpaste includes flavoring agents to create aroma and taste, coloring agents for aesthetics, foaming agents, thickening agents to create viscosity, pH adjusters, moisturizers to prevent the toothpaste from drying out, and preservatives to prolong shelf life. All these chemical ingredients, with their complex names, work together to achieve the simple goal of protecting teeth from decay. Measuring the ingredients in appropriate quantities is not a simple task because some substances are used in tons while others are measured in kilograms. After the components are carefully weighed and measured, they're combined in a high capacity mixing machine. This mixing machine is a specialized device designed to blend the components uniformly and evenly. At this point, powerful agitators start operating, capable of mixing large quantities at astonishing speeds, moving five tons in just five minutes. Not only does it pulverize the raw ingredients, but it also combines them with precision down to the millimeter by adding a type of gel to homogenize the mixture. This process involves using gigantic rotating agitators at dizzying speeds of up to 2500 revolutions per minute. It's equivalent to the power of a car moving at the speed of 30 kilometers an hour.
In vats, the mixture is combined to create a substance resembling a type of starch. Once all the components are thoroughly mixed, they're sent to be cooked. This mixture is then simmered in large pots. Toothpaste is manufactured in a variety of colors and flavors. Perhaps the most popular and familiar type is mint flavor. To create the multicolored stripes when squeezing the toothpaste out the tube, they add coloring agents to the mixture that don't affect its properties. Accuracy is crucial. The mixture must be precise to avoid any compromise in the final quality. Once the desired consistency is achieved, the toothpaste will pass through intricate conduits to a pressure chamber ready to be packaged into tubes. After being dispensed, sealed and labeled, the tubes are grouped into boxes ready to be packaged and shipped. Join us for a cup of tea as we delve into the world of toothbrush manufacturing. Perhaps one time while brushing your teeth, you've wondered how toothbrushes are made. Did you know that the original toothbrush bristles used to be made from Siberian boar hair? But several decades later, there were significant changes as companies began mass producing toothbrushes with soft bristles. The primary materials used in the manufacturing process are polypropylene, polyethylene, nylon, and rubber. These plastics are chosen for their durability, flexibility, and moisture resistance. Do you find these images intriguing? You see, in this factory, everything is automated. To form the plastic bodies of the toothbrushes, plastic pellets are placed into injection molding machines melted and injected into steel molds to create the shape of the toothbrush handles. After completing the plastic body of the toothbrush, the next step is bristle attachment. This involves the process of affixing the bristles. The movement of attaching the bristles into 39 small holes on the toothbrush head is so fast that it's difficult for the human eye to keep up with. It takes only about two and a half seconds to attach over 5,000 bristles to a toothbrush. The material for the bristles is also very special. It's known as a super soft gum friendly filament, which is one of the exclusive materials. After the bristle attachment process comes the trimming step to shape the toothbrush bristles. 
To ensure each bristle has uniform length and shape, three different trimming steps need to be carried out. This process helps create a toothbrush head with evenly trimmed bristles, avoiding damage to the gums and sharp edges of the bristles. With just a little time for packaging, the toothbrushes are ready to be released to the market. Each finished product is placed into plastic packaging and sealed with a cardboard backing. Now the toothbrushes are completely clean and safe to use. This is our channel. This is the channel manager. This is the video editor. And this is the content creator.